things that we're facing in our society today should not uh, take us by surprise. Jesus, in fact, told us this. He told us in, uh, that this was going to happen in our lives. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. Now this, listen to this. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So two valuable truths that he shares with us in that one little verse, two valuable truths is, number one, in this world, you're going to have problems. In, as long as you are in this world, anybody in the world? We are in the world, but we're not of the world, right? And that what he tells us? In this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have problems. You're going to have struggles. But he tells us something else that really is reassuring to us. He tells us that peace is to be found. There is a peace. In this world, you're going to be tossed back and forth like a boat on the water. But there is peace to be found, and that peace is only in Jesus Christ. You know, we all go through struggles, don't we? None of us are immune. But how we handle those struggles is seen in our attitude. How you handle those things. We talked about this a couple weeks ago when we saw the, the story between the 12 spies. The 10 spies come back with a negative attitude. The, 12, the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, had a positive attitude. They all saw the same thing. They dealt with the same problems. They looked at the same stuff. Yet 10 of them came back with a negative spirit about them, and two of them had a positive spirit. You know, it's easy for us to see the negative. It's easy for us to see the negative in the world. You know, you read the newspaper, it's all negative. You listen to the news, for the most part, it's all negative. Everything around you, you get at the coffee shop, it's all negative. Everything around us points to negativity, but, but we don't have to look far to see that something negative is in our life. It's there all around us. We live in a negative world. We live in a negative world. But what we don't realize is what the Bible says. We have something to do with that. We have something to do with that. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says this right here. The tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those, look, look we've, we've heard that part before, but look at this right next part. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow, that's a pretty strong verse right there. The tongue has the power of life and death. What we use this mouth for sometimes brings life or death, right? But those who love it will eat its fruit. How do we maintain a positive life in the face of such negativity that's going on in our world today? How do we, how do we maintain a positive life? Well, I think the, the process, and it is a process, it's, a, it's not just you turn the light switch on and off. It's a process of maintaining a positive attitude in our world means that we have to focus on positive things. You've got to focus on the positive things. Uh, you don't always have to focus on the negativity, right? Here's the key. Just because a thought, listen to me, just because, Kim tells me this all the time, just because, a, this, is, this is from Kim, just because a thought comes into your mind doesn't mean you have to say it. I know it's... It, it probably hits you the same way it hit me when she tells me that. Just because the thought comes into your mind doesn't mean you have to traffic in it. Come on. You control the doorway to your mind. You control. You allow him to come, the devil to come in with the negativity. You allow that to come in or you can close the door and kick him out. So I ask you, which one are you doing? Are you entertaining the negativity or you're saying, you don't have a place here. You don't have a place here. If that thought that comes into your mind is discouraging or defeating or, or full of negativity, then you got to ch choose to get rid of it. Choose to dwell on the thoughts that, are, that will empower you, that will inspire you, that will encourage you. Thoughts that will give you joy, peace, and love. Amen. you got to choose those things because you have a choice to make. It's our choice. We have a choice to make whether we're going to entertain the negative or we're going to entertain the positive in our life. And to, 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 enter, to maintain a positive attitude in a world that is so full of negativity, 
you have to reprogram your mind. You have to reprogram your mind. All of us fight the tendency, I think, to let our minds dwell in negative stuff. I don't know what it is. Maybe negative stuff is just more entertaining. Maybe, maybe negative stuff is just more, just, it's just something that we, it, we thrive on it, it seems like. We just are always looking for it. We are opening our doors to entertain it so much, and, and we dwell in that area. And you got to choose to reprogram your mind. Well, how do you change your mind? How do you reprogram your mind? Well, it's the power of positive thinking. you got to learn to think positive. How many of you are I want to see your hand. This is a vote. How many of you are optimists? Optimists. Everything, the the sky is full of of blue things, right? It's all beautiful. How many of you are just naturally negative? Well, I love this. The positive people, they shot. In fact, they did this right here. They threw both hands up. They were, in fact, they were trying to take their shoes off and throw their feet up in the air. The positive people are just, yes, yes, that's me, that's me. The negative people I looked over at Mark and he goes, <laughs> negative, negative, negative. Hey, yeah, that's me, that's me. We just sort of thrive in that stuff. Well, it's the power of positive thinking. Now, don't misunderstand this message that it's all fluff, meringue. This is, this is the, it's the power. You have the control of your mind of what you're going to allow to come in and what you're going to allow to go out. So you have the control of that. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. He addressed a church full of, full of negativity, full of negativity, a steady stream of negativity. And he pleaded with the church to rally around. Now listen to me, church. I'm talking to our church this morning. He pleaded with the church to rally around their shared love for Christ. You're not going to, oh, you're going to seldom agree with me. I was going to say not always agree with me, but you may not, you may not always agree with me. And I may not always agree with you. There's going to be, some of us like Fords, some of us like Chevys, and some of us like Nissans. Some of us, like, we, we have different preferences in life, right? We have different, so I, you couldn't get me to buy a whatever, you know, or you couldn't get me, I couldn't get you to buy a whatever. You know, we're going to have disagreements in those things. But Paul is telling the church at Philippi to rally around their shared love of Christ. We may disagree about a lot of things, pews and chairs and whatever else, the color of the walls and everything that goes in between it. But what we can agree with this morning, church, is the love of Christ that dwells within our heart, and that should be the unifying factor of our church. When people talk about us, it shouldn't be, yeah, they got this and that or that or this, that we should be, they've got the love of Christ within their hearts. And that's what makes the difference in that church sacrifice for each other and do everything Paul said do everything listen to this everything he said without grumbling or arguing can you imagine what that would be like can you imagine what church would be like can you imagine what your home would be like can you imagine what your workplace would be like can you imagine what life would be like if we rallied around the shared love of Christ and we did everything, everything, not some things, not a few things, but everything without grumbling and complaining. In these four short chapters of Philippians, Paul instructs the church to rejoice 15 times. 15 times. Philippians is not a big book. 15 times Paul tells them to rejoice and it's interesting, if you look at that whole chapter or its story in context, it's, it's interesting to note that he appears far less concerned about why they are negative, because they were negative about a lot of things. But he was, he's not concerned about why they were so negative as much as he co- was concerned about them having a right spirit. In other words, Paul was saying, don't dwell on the negative because there's always negative among you. There's always negativity, but don't dwell on that. In fact, he said, work on having a right, choose to have a right attitude. Now, Paul wasn't just writing this because he didn't have anything else to say. 
and because he didn't experience this in his own life. When Paul and Silas, remember when Paul and Silas were thrown into prison? You know, when they were thrown into prison, the Bible says they sang praises. They sang hymns unto, and of thanks unto God. In the midst of difficulty in their life, they just chose to sing praises. They chose to sing praises. You know, I put Terry in that position. If Terry and Paul would have been in that prison, Paul may have been singing praises, but Terry would have been complaining and griping. I would have been, you know, but I would have been talking about all of the pain we're in. You know, we're in bondage here. We're never going to get out. In fact, they were doomed to be death, to be killed, and, and yet they chose to sing praises. They, we, while many people would be crying in their pain, or, or at today's time, they'd be crying about their rights, their rights, or complaining about the situation in some way or another, but not Paul and Silas. Not Paul and Silas. What great examples they are of choosing the right attitude. Because that was the difference. But the difference from Paul and Silas and the difference in so many other people today and some, sometimes us in our lives is was their attitude. Their attitude. They had a good, positive attitude. Their faith carried them. Their promise of God carried them. Their commitment to the Lord carried them. And that's why Paul could write this word. This is my text. That was the introduction. That's why Paul could write these words. Philippians 4, 8. If you're a missionette, you know these words. You memorize them. I have to read them, but you can quote them. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. Now that's positive. That's positive. Anytime you may be going through a spirit of negativity in your life, just whip out Philippians 4, 8. Just probably be a good for, verse for us to memorize, wouldn't it? He says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy, he said this right here. What did he say about those things? Think on those things. Dwell on those things. Let those things permeate your spirit. Let those things overtake your, your heart. Let those things be a part of your life. Think on those things. You know what the word think means? It means to meditate or to chew on the, you've heard that phrase, chew on this for a little bit. Chew on those things. Chew on those. Let them be, get a, be a part of you. Meditate on them. Let them sink into your spirit. Paul's encouragement is deceptively simple. He says, what it, think about whatever is right, whatever is good, whatever is best. When you're looking at people or you're looking at situations, instead of judging them or being negative about something, why don't you think about what is good and what is right and what is the best in their life? Find something good in them. Find something good in the situation and dwell on those things and not on the negativity. Because how many of you want that happen in your life? I don't want people to see only the negative in my life because there is negative in my life. There's bad things in my life. I'm not a perfect person. Neither are you. But I don't want people looking at the negative in my life and I want people looking at the positive things in my life and, and look toward the good things, not the negative things. It's simple. It's a simple theory. It's a simple idea. It's a simple concept, but it is also one of the most powerful concepts in the Word of God this morning. Paul introduces each word with whatever, whatever, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever, whatever. Here's the description that God gives us for believers trapped in a negative spirit. Think on these things. Think on these things. Think on these things. It's a command. It's, it's present tense. It's not written past tense. It's written present, present tense. Keep on focusing your thoughts on these eight principles of life. Keep thinking about those things. Keep having a positive attitude. Because what we think sets the boundaries in our life. What we think sets the boundaries of our attitude. So Paul invites the Philippians to shape their imagination, either individually or collectively as a church. 
around those things that are honorable, that are just, that are pure and right and commendable. Why is it so important for you to fill your mind with good things? Because the devil is always filling us full of trash, right? Why is it so important? Watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, because they become your habits. And watch your habits, because they become your character. And watch your character, because it becomes you. Amen? See what happens? You are what you think. You are what you think. And you become your thoughts. Whatever you dwell on, whatever you fill your life full of, you become those things. You become your thoughts. You become what you think. Philippians 4, 8, Paul is encouraging us to seek spiritual stability by following these simple directives. We need to think the right things. Think the right things. Because you can always, I'm telling you, you can always, always, always find negative. Always find negative. When we built our house eight years ago, whatever it was, it was a dream house, just exactly what we wanted. We drew up the floor plan, da 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 da, da all the stuff, you know, everything. Got in it, probably went in it in a week. Thought, man, I wish I'd done this right here. I mean, it's, it was our dream house. Just exactly what we wanted, you know, and just perfect, just everything's right. Except for the living room's too small. Our bedroom's too big. This is that way, and that's this way, and this is. And, I mean, I hadn't been in it very long at all until I decided I need to sell that house. In fact, if you want to buy it, you can buy it today. I need to sell that house and build me another one because that one doesn't really meet what I like, you know. And so Instead of looking at the good things about it, I look at the negative things about it, right? So you've got to learn to think the right things. Then you've got to practice the right things. It's not enough just to think it. You've got to start doing it. You've got to put your thoughts into action. You've got to practice the right things. And if you do those things, they'll help you develop a right attitude in life. Our attitude that we choose to, sh uh, to dwell on shapes not only the way we view the past, but it also dominates our present. It makes you do what you do, but it also defines your future. It, it shapes your view of the past. It dominates what you do today, and it defines what you're going to do tomorrow. Paul gave us a prescription for positive thinking. And if followed, if you follow this prescription, how many of you ever take prescriptions? If you follow that prescription, you will get better, right? Taking a little prescription now for an arm. And if you follow that prescription, you're going to get better. Or so they say, right? Well, Paul gave us a prescription. If we follow that, we have the, it, will, it will have the power to transform our lives. Transform our lives. He's, Paul is the same writer who wrote uh, in Romans chapter 12 about a transformation that takes place. He, said, he encouraged us to transform our lives by what? By renewing our mind, changing our mind, renewing our mind, transforming our mind. It says this right here. Do not conform yourself to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be, in other words, you're, by changing your mind, by tra transforming your mind, by reprogramming your mind, what you think, what you, what you allow in, will change and transform your life. Some of us need a transformation, don't we? We need to change the way we think, the way we act in our lives. He says, you'll change your mind, will change your life. And then you'll be able to test and improve what is God's will, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Negativity comes natural in our life. It's natural. It's just a natural byproduct of living in this world. Therefore, to overcome it, we've got to reprogram our minds. Reprogram our minds. Thinking positively doesn't just happen. It's not mind over matter. It's blab it and grab it, name it and claim it. It's not just that kind of attitude. But you do have to choose 
what you do. We, we have to choose it. We have to work at it in our life. We need to make the choice to no longer think negatively, but rather renew our thinking to positive, exchanging negative thoughts for positive thoughts. You don't have to entertain those things. And by doing so, your mind will be transformed. Are you with me? Are you with me? It's kind of like you went to sleep. I heard a couple of snores. Transform your mind. Instead of routinely thinking negatively, my, my pattern of thought can be positive. I don't have to think negative. I don't have to think negative. And having a positive mindset allows me to see clearly the will of God, Paul says. If you'll renew your mind and it'll transform your life, then he says it will transform your life in the point that you can see clearly God's purpose for your life. How many of you want to walk in God's will for your life? You want to walk in God's will. And when I can know, uh, when I can sense God's positive moving in my life and his will for me in my life, then I can then I can work toward accomplishing that in my life. So think those things. Positive thoughts turn into positive insight, which turns into positive action. Positive thoughts turn into positive insight, turns into positive action. So Paul is inviting us to raise our sights so that we can be inspired and transformed inspired and transformed so that we can experience more fully the peace of God in our life. Have you ever met a negative person that you just want to hang out with? A negative person and you just say, man, I want to go hang out with them for a while. Usually when you know a negative person, you try to shun them. You go the other direction. When you see them coming down the church aisle, you, go the, you slip into the bathroom or you go into another door or something, right? You just avoid them at all costs. And so we need, to, we need to raise our sights on positive things that we can experience the peace of God in our life. Because the peace of God is what God ultimately wants for your life. And attitude is such an important part of spiritual, listen to this, attitude is such an important part of spiritual stability. Spiritual stability. There's re the reason we have so many emo uh, the reason we have so many uh, immature Christians. I'm trying to think of a word that I won't offend somebody with. Maybe immature. I'll hack with it. The reason we have so many weird Christians is because we don't have spiritual stability in our life. We're tossed with every little thing, every little negativity that comes down the pike. We grab it and we float with it for a while. And then we jump on the next one that comes down. And maybe the next one's positive and we go that way. And we're never making any spiritual progress in our life. We're never stable in our life because we're always jumping on some negative thoughts or some negative attitude. And we never begin to, begin to mature and grow and become stable Christians in our life. Attitude is such an important part of spiritual stability. Emotional state. Life is what you make it. It's what you make it. We're all dealing with stuff. We're all dealing with stuff. I saw, uh, watched the video last week, and Steve talked about his cancer, and how, how I tell you, I don't know about you, I probably wouldn't handle that way Steve did. I'm just telling you up front. I've been whining, I've been whining, and I'd be complaining, and I'd probably said, why me, Lord? I know somebody else could handle this better. Give it to them. <laughs> Deliver me, and I'll pray for them. <laughs> I would not be a good patient in that case, but I, I, have, I was walking with Steve a little bit through that, not near as much as some of you did, and and. He had such a positive attitude. He had such a positive spirit. And I tell you, Steve will probably confirm this, that is probably 99.9.9.9 percentage of the healing is a positive attitude. Because if you think you're, you're going to die with it, you're going to give up, and you're going to, I've got a son-in-law whose dad's going through something right now, and he just he told his wife the other day, he said, I just want to die. Just, he's probably 55 or so. 
Brad's dad, and he just said, told his family, he said, just leave me alone and let me die. And I text, Michelle sent me that text, and I sent her a text right back, and I said, you tell him we're praying for him, and you don't let him give up, and, you know, I try to encourage them, and I don't, don't, tell him God loves him, you know. If there's no other reason to live, it's because God loves you, right? And God, if God loves you, he's got a purpose for you in your life. I don't know how we deal with the negativity in our life, but we're all part of it. It's, it's part of your life. I don't know if, I, if you know this or not, but our Spanish, one of our Spanish uh, congregants over there, Juan Carlos, uh, last week was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Uh, did a biopsy, and, and we're going to be praying for them, and we're going to try to do something to help them out. He got, he can't work anymore for a while. They're going to tell him this week, they may have told you this too, Steve, I don't know. They're going to tell him this week how much longer he can live. Let me tell you something. The doctor doesn't tell you how long you can live. The doctor doesn't have that authority to tell you you've got four months to live or you've got six months to live or a year to live. The doctor doesn't have that kind of authority. He may have some knowledge, but he has not that authority. There's only one that has authority of life and death, and his name is Jesus Christ, and he died and he lives again to set us free from that bondage. Amen. But I tell you, I've talked to Juan Carlos a few times in the last couple of weeks and trying to keep track of him and all that with what's going on. And I tell you, he, he must have gone to Steve Lester's school of positive thinking because he has such a great spirit about him. Sweet daughter right here. He has such a great spirit about him. He's, Pastor, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I, I got, God's got a plan. You know, It's just so cool to see the positive aspect of his life coming through in the most, most difficult and most negative time probably in his life when he's facing life or death he said it's gonna be okay it's good things are gonna work out god's got a plan come on a positive life leads to positive thinking leads to positive thinking in the current world climate we need to remain positive with our thoughts all that's going on in our world today, we need to be positive in our thoughts and our minds. And the most critical thing is not what's happening around us or what's happening to us or what's going through us, but the most important thing is what we think matters. What we think matters because your positive outlook in life will change your destiny in life. Point in case. This brings us to where we all started this whole series a couple of weeks ago. Solomon says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Spiritual battle, listen to me church, I'm closing. The spiritual battle is always in the thought world. Spirit, the devil doesn't attack me physically until he attacks me mentally. He attacks my mind, he knows I'm weak, and then he begins to move into my physical body. True spirituality always begins inside our thought world. Our thought world. The devil brings thoughts to us, negative thoughts. But when we think the right thoughts, we do the right things and we have the right feelings. When we think wrong thoughts, we do the wrong things, we have the wrong feelings, those all work out positive or negative. Which one are you going to be, positive or negative? The key to, to triumph in the spiritual life, the key to overcoming and, and beginning to become a stable believer is learning how to control your thoughts, to control your attitudes. It's so important, church, that we guard our heart. You gotta guard our heart. Our heart is where it all starts, guard, guard our heart. That we would always have a positive attitude. We are, we are uh, maybe you saw it on Facebook, maybe you didn't see it, you saw it on the announcements, I guess, the last couple of weeks, last week and this week. We are, uh, we've sort of adopted this theme as we come back to church. We're back to the future. We're back to the future. We, we are back to church. Listen to me, listen to this. We're back to church, and we're looking forward to the future. We're back to church, and we're looking forward to what God has in our, in our future. Now, one key component in all of that, the one key component in that statement 
is this right here. It's our attitude. What's our attitude going to be as we, as we come back to the church, as we come back to church? What's our attitude going to be? We uh, go through those other two slides or so, whatever they are there. We're starting back on Sunday night. Tonight's the first night. We was going to do it last week, but the pastor skipped out on us. <laughs> we're we're come back tonight, tonight at 6 o'clock. We're starting church back tonight at 6 o'clock. We want you to come and be a part of that. We're going to be... Uh, we're going to be rotating around. The staffs are going to be rotating around, teaching and preaching and speaking. I'm not going to be here tonight. <clears throat> but you be here. I'm going to be on the road. But you be here tonight. Be here tonight, 6 o'clock. Uh, Sister Crystal is going to lead us in a Bible study that's going to be encouraging to you about, about how to study the Word of God. And uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be good. Sunday school started this morning. Sunday school started this morning. You need to be in Sunday school. You need to be in Sunday school. Terry does. A, Terry Spradling does a great job teaching our our ladies Bible study. It's really not just ladies. It's just for a senior adult Bible study. We don't actually divide by age so much. But she does a great job over here. That class was right in that room right there. Steve Lesser is right over here in this room. He is a phenomenal Bible teacher. Just. Just amazing, great. We got programs for kids. You need to be here and you need to have your kids here. You need to be in there. Be in those. Be here. Be a part of that. Support that. Wednesday night we've started something I'm excited about. Uh, I was coming back from the doctor a couple weeks ago, in fact, on a Wednesday afternoon, and God God just told me to do this right here. Just plain as day. It's just that simple. So we're gonna do midweek manna. Because you know that if you provide food, people will come. Right? Provide food, people will come. We're doing a dinner every Wednesday night. We had a great one last Wednesday night. I mean, great dinner. The ladies ever did it all. I didn't do any of it. But I didn't even set up tables. They did a great job. I had a baked potato bar. Yes, baked potato bar with all the junk to go on it, all the cholesterol stuff, you know, all that stuff, carbs and everything, packed right into one potato. It's great. Five bucks. Five bucks, three dollars for twelve and under. You, you, you can't go anywhere. You can't go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal for five bucks. And this is much better. Every week we're going to have a different meal, a dip, something different. You know, I, this week I don't know what she's got. She's got. But I'm going to tell you something else. Let me insert this right here. She needs help doing it. Crystal can't do it all the time. We did it at lunch last week. We did it during lunch. Prepared it for that night, and somebody came in and helped us serve it stuff. But we need some help. Getting it ready, either at noontime, come and help us, or come and help us at mostly at 6.15 to be here to help serve it. We need some help. It's not self-serve. We need people to sign up. I think there's a sign-up sheet in the front. Sign up. Come on. Sign up for Midweek Manna. You need to, what a blessing it is. I mean, you, you've worked hard all day. Come home. you got to fix dinner. No, you don't. Come here and eat with us. Come eat with us. Midweek manna. 6.15 to, 7, to 6.45. We want you to get out of there and get in here. And then over here, and we've got classes going on everywhere. And then in the, we're doing a Bible study in here. And uh, we want you to come and be a part of that too. We're going to rotate around. Different people are going to be speaking every, every week. And then, you know, the most important thing we're going to do on Wednesday night, we're going to come into this room, the upper room. And we're going to spend some time in prayer. I'm telling you, the next month, you're going to hear that word prayer every time I, I speak. We're going to come in here and we're going to pray. Because I think we're living in a crucial time in our history. We need to pray. Not long from now, we're going to start a 21 day uh, of prayer. and Fasting if you want to. But 21 days of prayer, right leading up, right to the election itself. 21 days of prayer. We're going to be praying. And we're going to be praying on Wednesday night right in here. So you come. We're going to have a devotion, then we're going to have prayer. There's not going to be any music necessarily, nobody's singing and dancing or anything, unless the Spirit moves you. And we're going to pray. We want you to come. Because really that's the most important thing we're going to do Wednesday night is pray. So come. Don't, don't think that's an off night. Come and pray and join us. And it's all going to happen. It's all going to be, it's all going to be successful or not based on one thing. 
our attitude. Our attitude. Our attitude is going to be an important part. Let us not let the past hinder our progress. Some of us need to just forget about some things. Did you hear that? Not the phone. Some of, some of us need to just forget about some things. Some hurts, some hard feelings. We just need to forget about those things and just move on. It's time to move on. Let's not let the past hinder our progress. Let's not let a negative attitude keep us from God's best for our church. So, I put in the very bottom of my notes. I want to make sure I say this. Would you join me this morning? Starting today by declaring that I'm going to have a positive attitude. I'm not going to let the devil run this place. I'm not going to let the devil run my life. I'm not going to let the devil influence me. Starting today, from this point on, even when OU gets their tail kicked, I'm going to find something good about it. they got a great young quarterback who can't hit the the north side. Well, got a great young quarterback. I'm going to build on the positive. So, see, you you have a choice today. You can build on the negative or you can build on the positive. So what are you going to build on? I'm choosing today, from this day on, to have a positive attitude. And we're going to go forward and do something for the kingdom of God. Let me tell you a secret. You may be aware of it, may not. You can clap for that. You know what? We don't know how much time we have left. And there are people dying every day not knowing Jesus Christ. And we're talking and we're arguing about the color of the carpet. It's time that we forget about that stuff and it's time that we move on to something positive and making an impact in this community and in people's lives. Would somebody say amen with me? So from this point on, today, right now, starting now, Terry Bradley is going to have a positive attitude. And if you catch me with a negative attitude, you kick me. You kick me hard. Because I'm declaring it right now. Satan, just leave me alone. Because I'm not going to put up with it. I have a positive attitude, come rain or shine. Would you join me in that? Why don't you stand on your feet this morning? Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you this morning. We know that our attitude sets the course of our life. It dictates everything about us. It sets the boundaries for our lives. So God, right now we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to guard our hearts and reprogram our minds that on those things that are positive rather than grabbing hold of all the negative. Father, we just rebuke the negative thoughts. We bind them right now in Jesus' name. Any negative spirit, any negative attitude, God, we take authority over it in the name of Christ. And Father, we pray right now that you would give us a positive outlook on life a positive attitude about things. God, always, always thinking about those things that are pure and holy and and good. And Father, we stand upon those things right now. And if the devil ever comes into our life, God, we're going to pull out Philippians 4, 8, and we're going to read it, we're going to memorize it, where we can quote it back, that we can say, God, I'm standing on those things that are pure and holy and honest and valuable. God, I'm going to hold on to those things. Help my attitude today. Help all of our attitudes throughout this church, Lord, that we would be positive rather than negative because it's a choice that we make. Father, we thank you today in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.